Hello, I'm Arjen, the Common Sense Quantum Physicist. This sequence is a video comment on a point mentioned by Professor Leonard Susskind in his sixth lecture on quantum mechanics. I highly recommend this lecture for those who want to be introduced to quantum mechanics and to the way how quantum state vectors are used to compute measurement probabilities on the polarization of photons. At one point in this lecture, at about the 12th minute, Professor Susskind asserts that quite hard to think of a classical setup which would produce the same kind of probability distributions and how they depend on the orientation of the polarizers. I don't think anybody has ever successfully designed such a thing, at least not in any great generality, uh, that would uh, do the right thing to polarize photons. Here it is commonly accepted that no classical model could reproduce the full outcome of polarization measurements on photons. There are no means to obtain two distinct outcomes with the quantum probabilities cosine squared theta and sine squared theta, for instance with flying bullets that are flagged with the direction theta. However, and here is the point I want to put forward, if one makes use of so-called pilot waves, it is possible to reproduce the quantum probabilities with a model that uses ordinary everyday objects. Pilot waves were introduced by Louis de Broglie in the 1920s in order to make some, some intuitive sense of quantum mechanics and were later rediscovered by David Bohm. Pilot waves have the ability to steer the motion of the particles. So let's see how we could design such an experiment with ordinary objects and that reproduces the quantum probabilities of polarized photons. We start with an object that we may describe with the help of a quantum state vector. For instance, a spinning needle of unit length that we shoot in the z direction. For reasons of simplicity we restrict the example to the situation where the needle spins in a plane parallel to the z-direction. If the needle spins parallelly to the xz plane, we denote its state vector by cat x or vector 1, 0. If the needle spins parallelly to the yz plane, we denote its state vector by cat y or vector 0, 1. And if the needle spins in an arbitrary plane of angle theta with the xz plane still parallel to the z direction, we denote its state vector cat theta by cosine theta times cat x plus sine theta cat times cat y. So if theta is zero, we check that cat theta is zero is one times x times cat x, I, I mean, plus zero times cat y, which is just cat x. The same for theta is 90 degrees. We check that cat theta is 90 degrees is zero times cat x plus one times cat y, which is just cat y. So we've assigned the quantum state vector to the spinning state of an ordinary object. So that's the easy part. The next step is to describe a two-valued measurement Rm, where one value is obtained with probability, co probability cosine squared theta, and the alternative value with probability sine squared theta, if the needle in, is in state cat theta. Let us use a wire grid whose wires are spaced by the length of the needle and put it on the path of the needles perpendicularly to the propagation direction. Let us then define the result Rm is plus 1 if the needle passes through the grid without touching any wire. Then it wins the points. 
If the needle touches a wire, it loses one point. The result of the measurement will be Rm is minus 1. We are considering the ideal case where the needle and the wires of the grid are infinitely thin. We may do this because this is a thought experiment. In real life, needles and wires always have a finite thickness and that would change a bit the results of the experiment. But for the sake of simplicity, let us ignore that. Let us now fix the direction of the wire grid such that the wires are vertically aligned along the x direction. So if the needle is in the cat's x state, that is if it is spinning parallelly to the x z plane, there is zero probability for that needle to touch a wire of the grid, because we are considering the ideal case of infinitely thin needles and wires. The result for a needle with theta is zero is always plus one, so there is a probability cosine squared theta is cosine squared zero degrees, that's one, that it will pass the grid unaffected. So we have a probability one for that possibility. If the needle is in the cat y state, that is if it is spinning parallelly to the theta is 90 degrees x z plane, we want the needle to have cosine squared theta is cosine squared 90 degrees is zero probability to pass the grid unaffected. So we want it to always touch a wire of the grid. Well, remembering that the spacing between the wires is equal to the unit length of the needle, this may be achieved if the needle always has an angle of 90 degrees with the z-axis when it arrives at the plane of the wire grid. For theta is 90 degrees, we need a kind of pilot wave that steers the spinning motion of the needle in such a way that the phase of the needle with respect to the z-direction is always 90 degrees when it arrives at the plane of the wire grid. And if the needle is in the th cat theta state, that means if it is in the state cosine theta times cat x plus sine theta cat y, we want the probability to pass the grid unaffected to be cosine squared theta. Equivalently, this means that the probability to touch a wire of the grid must be 1 minus cosine squared theta is sine squared theta, which physically means that the length of the projection of the needle on the y-axis must be sine squared theta when it arrives at the plane of the wire grid. Well, we can verify that this is arranged if the pilot wave steers the needle in such a way that the phase of the needle with respect to the z-direction is always theta or 180 degrees minus theta when it arrives at the plane of the wire grid. So we've managed to retrieve quantum probabilities with ordinary spinning needles provided that the orientation of the needles is steered by a pilot wave. Building such an experiment is not trivial but with some creativity it is in, pos in principle possible. At least someone could simulate it with some nice computer animation. This would allow easier visualization of quantum processes.